So um, I picked this go-kart up at uh, Southern Auto Auction, probably been at least four years. Um, I wasn't there to buy anything but motorcycles, and they had four of these. So I just thought it was the coolest thing because I've got a thing for the lime green. <laughs> and two kids, two boys, so I figured they'd appreciate it. And uh, I ended up buying the thing and paid way too much for it because people were bidding on all of these things. But apparently it's from an amusement park that closed and somehow some auto dealer got them and was selling them at the auction. Did they have a whole bunch of them at the time? Four of them. Yeah. Four of them. And like I said, lime green, uh, it's my thing. And of course, I'm a Honda guy, so having a Honda engine is just all the rage for me because... How many, how many horses is it? I don't even, probably five and a half, whatever they are. And it's probably governed down deep. Hey guys, and how's it going? This is going to be part two on the amusement park go-kart. On the first round, we picked it up. Took the body off, got the engine running, got it so it could spin the back tires and put power to the ground. Now we just gotta make it so it stops. That's where we left off. The master cylinder is locked up inside. So let's get you set up in a stand and we'll start taking it apart and see if we can fix that. Let's just start by getting the spring out of there. I have a feeling we may end up having to buy a new one, but it's gotta come out no matter what. And there's an off chance that we could fix it. We will. Well, I'm hoping we can unbolt the pedal assembly and it'll lift right out of there. There's a rod that goes through it and then that's bolted into it. But uh, the, the pin or the, I don't know what you want to call it, that goes into the center of the master, that usually just sits in there. the feeling I have a standard socket on a metric bolt. <laughs> He's a little sloppy. So nice and then to put those little access holes right in the middle of the pedal to get to the bolts. Well, I don't think that's the intention, but. Taking the center out because these didn't want to come out at all. I think I took the long way around on this one. Should just take another second and look at it a little bit. I thought this was welded on. It's not. It's bolted through these two rubber mounts. It takes that off and it looks like this whole plate comes out of the way. And if I'd done that to begin with, I could have left the pedal alone, just unbolted the two bolts from it, pulled it straight out. But hindsight, you know how that works. Help a little air tools can take care of. Makes it a little easier to work on. Yeah, one brake line and we should be able to get on the bench and so turn into it. The prize. 
Got that in the vise. See if you can get the snap ring out of it. I'm gonna watch this one across the room too, huh? Definitely a tad bit of crustiness in there, huh? I wonder why I wouldn't move. <laughs> uh, what should we do? Should we just kind of put some penetrant in it? Do you want to... You could probably put the ultrasonic cleaner too, huh? To evict some of that rust. working with him huh? you guys see so that plunger is supposed to be able to move up and down inside there and it's frozen what is with dropping stuff today just frozen so we'll get whatever crud we can off Give her some soapy. Soak in. We got a brass rod. Maybe we can tap down on it. I think it is not stuck in the in position. Something we might be able to do too. If we take the fitting out of the other end, we might be able to drive a rod through and, and tap it out. Hmm. Good idea. Let's give it a couple of love taps though, so you can get it to move. Hit you. Hold on. Got to move. You're too close. I wanted to get it where the master cylinder was touching the bottom of the vise, so it doesn't want to move on us. Let's go try that again. It's shooting brake fluid out the other side, so it is going down some. <laughs> the rag over that. It's getting me in the, uh, get me in the jewels there. I have a, a wheel cylinder hone. I wonder if we can kind of take that because it's just a very that very top is where it's stuck on. We clean that up. Do what we said back off on the other side. Take the fitting and try to drive it back the other way. Yeah, let's give that a shot. on it run it backwards just ran the spring down there we go it's, at least we can so when we drive it the other way because there's a seal in there when we drive it the other way we're not pushing it through the crud and taking out what's left of the seal if it's savable, you know. Feels okay. Might give that a little bit more. Then we'll take the fitting out, flip it over, try driving it back out. That's better. Gotta have a smooth hole.
the little brass rod will fit in there. Hopefully, there's some solid to tap against in there, you know. Find out. Home we go. Just blue to get out. Should be a spring behind it that kicks it back out. I know that. It's gonna fight it every inch of the way. Get it square. Yeah, we're out. Okay. And it all depends on whether that seal survived. Seals survived. This one kind of keeps the dirt from the outside. And this one I believe keeps is the hydraulic pressure one. Let's go clean that up. I wash everything in the parts washer and then hot water. I want to clean up some of the crap that's on here. This is a brass wire wheel. <laughs> I don't want to take the seal off because I don't want to damage it any more than what it is. It look pretty good. Right. I think we should probably work on the bore. Now that the thing's out of there. And actually I want to pick, you guys can't see it, there's a little bit of crud clip right there. Let's get rid of that. Kind of like a starter kit for the next amount of rust, you know. Uh, let's get the honing stone and I, I want to use brake fluid to do the honing with. And I changed over to a different, I put those stones on a different Tool. The spring loaded part of this one kind of sucked. It didn't have any balls to it. It's the way it was put together. So we switched them over to, to this one. Get some fluid. All right. the other end but think we got it Ooh, the paper towel Ooh, 
pretty good. Can you see it? Probably a little bit of light wouldn't hurt the situation. But I got everything cleaned up and ready to go back together. I figured I'd just go over how things work and for those those who care. So there is a, a hole drilled right down in there is the reservoir for the brake fluid. So that hole is right about there. And this is the chamber that makes the pressure. This is the plunger on the inside of it. It has two seals on it. It's spring-loaded back so when you let off the pedal it pushes back up on its own well this is the natural resting place put the snap ring on that should stop right about there that hole is just above this uh, uh, seal right here when the brake pedal is all the way back fluid could fill up this chamber you hit the brake pedal it blocks that hole off and now it hydraulically uh, creates pressure as you push the brake pedal down and fluid comes out the other side goes out to the brake lines Fluid also stays inside here, but there's really not much pressure. It's just kind of a gravity feed thing. And this one just kind of keeps it from leaking out of the back of the master cylinder. That's pretty much what its job is to do. On the, This is a single master cylinder, and then there's dual. Uh, really old cars, like 66 and down, kind of run single. And then they went to a dual. It's got two chambers in it. Kind of like another spring and another extension on the end of it. And it does everything, but it does it twice. And it has two brake lines that will come out of it. So if one... Uh, chamber gets a leak or a failure or a brake line or a wheel cylinder gets a leak and you lose pressure the other one still works it has essentially just a double chamber but on this that's what we got let's go put it back together see if we get brakes i right, see if we can knock this out take a q-tip i'm gonna lube this in with some brake fluid let's go get a little bit on the seals And this should be able to go in and spring back for us, which it now does. We have that. We have the snap ring. It's got to go over it. And the pliers, see if we can get it all ready to go at the same time. There you get it. Kind of push around with a screwdriver a little just to make sure that. Snapping is seated. And now, when you hit the brake pedal, it moves. Good. What do you think our success rate is? I'm going to give it, I'm going to give 80% on, on this. I don't know if the calipers are going to be any good. I'm fairly happy that's going to be able to survive for us. So, put the mess cylinder back together, put the pedal on, of course. Now that I know how it comes apart, it makes it a lot easier. I want to talk about something called free play. Free play is, and goes on brake and clutch. You want whatever you're powering, whether it be the master cylinder or a clutch, not to have any engagement when the pedal is in its resting position, when your foot is not on it. And if you notice right now, there's a gap. If I would go to bolt this down, if I were to go to bolt that down, I would essentially be blocking off that little hole that we showed you earlier and fluid would never be able to drop down there. A lot of people make the adjustment uh, to try to make their brake pedal higher and what happens if they get a slight leak or their calipers, as brake calipers pads wear, the caliper gets further and closer and closer together and it uses fluid that just stays behind it to take up the excess space. Well, that excess fluid, once it got, would get used up, your pedal would go to the floor. Nothing ever replenishes it because it, it never is able to come back enough for the fluid to drop down in the hole. So that would be the issue there. So I'm gonna just go run this stud in. That's why it's adjustable on a threaded rod like that. 
So I'm going to run that in until essentially there's no gap. And probably even a little then some. Run that back. I'm going to give it a hair more. I'm still kind of pushing on just a little bit. Maybe a little more. See how that pedal can kind of move now? So that is not influencing that massive cylinder at all when your foot is off the brake pedal. That's what you're looking for. So I'm going to go bolt all that back together. Get some fluid in it. I try to bleed the brakes. I'm not sure how well this is going to show up, but there's that hole we were talking about. Let me get some light on it. Right there. And the brake pedal's all the way back. If you could actually look in there, you could see, you actually see the rubber diaphragm moving past it so that's it when the brake pedal is all the way down the fluid can go into the chamber you push it it blocks it off so it doesn't just squirt back up out of the hole and builds pressure and allows it to go out of the line yeah the line that you can't see right there Let's see if this angle is a little bit better for you The brake lines are already be full. I'm just like if I'm just gonna go pump it three times, crack this line loose, see if we can get some air out of it. Did you see it pop out right there? Get in a pedal. But we want to keep doing that so no more air comes out of that line. If we just keep getting air and keep getting air and keep getting air, that's going to mean that seal is no good. It's allowing air to come into the back of the master cylinder. Pretty much straight fluid. We're gonna give it one more. Okay. Just make sure I don't run out on top. I'm getting pretty close to the low. One more, just for. And I want to try and do it so that when I tighten it back up, the line faces the way I want it to. Okay. Yep. Let's go check out back, see what we made out. One last thing I wanted to point out before uh, 
and move on is put a cap on. There's a vent hole right there, and I blow through it just to make sure that that vent hole goes through the inside. And the reasoning behind that is it's kind of like if you take your, your drink, your soft drink or water, and you have a straw in it, you put your thumb over the end of the straw, and you lift up, and you're able to, you know, to hold the fluid out until you let your thumb off the top of it, and the fluid drains back out of it. Well, that's kind of what's happening with the master cylinder, too. That little hole that I showed you down below, the fluid needs to drop down in there when there's a vacant spot for it to go. But if this was blocked off, it would just hold the fluid level at that, you know, the same scenario as what the straw was. So that's why it's got a little vent in it to allow the uh, expansion and contraction and plus for the fluid levels to drop down into there. Let's see if we can get push stick here. Good. I really should bleed the whole system, uh, old fluid out of those lines. I am out of brake fluid though, so I don't have enough to go purge that. I gotta go get some. Let me go do that right now and go to lunch. See you in a second. Just make sure both sides work. Oops. Fell in the hole. Good done vacuuming it out and okay, found ourselves 50 cents that little Johnny lost back in 1983. Actually, it looks like tokens. Let's go find out what they are. Let's go clean them up. So the mystery has revealed itself where it's from. It says Seekonk Grand Prix 1098 Fall River Ave Seekonk Mass. All right. Now we know we have the history and little mementos to put on the keychain. <laughs> Poor little Johnny lost his ride. Probably argued with the guy up and down. Mom, I had two more rides. <laughs> I got a bungee cord on the brake pedal holding tension on it. See how we do. Got to do that a couple of times. <laughs> I'll spare you the details. You get the idea. Well, the brakes are all done and I'd like to possibly look into seeing if we can modify the wheels some. Let's go pop a tire off and see what we have to work with. I got a couple of things laying on the floor over there and possibly we can match something up and get on here. Think they come loose? <laughs> They'll come loose, but not with that I guess. I'm hoping, I should double check, huh? Yeah, that those are the four. I'm getting impact. It's a heavy little tire. Copy with. Like a 
he's got a bad bearing. I think it's just the uh, the caliper rattling. The finger cutter. Shh, whack. Let's get the bolts out for the caliper. Now I'd like to get something like this on there. Other than that, just look much better. That's the three bolt pattern, but even with that, let's go hollow the guts out of it and see if we can come up with something. Yeah, it's just not going to help us. It's a, actually a six bolt. They use three and three, it looks like. And the other wheel is four and four. So, not without making a hub or something for it. I don't know if I'm going to get into that right now. I was hoping we can kind of just bolt them on, but let's go play with something else. Took the nuts off the front wheel. I'm going to show how that was made because I was able to see that it. Yuck. That was made out of a universal for a drive shaft. They used like the. Not the yoke. What do you call the. What do you call the part that uh, attaches to the. The rear end. Yokes the front side, the back side. I don't know. <laughs> so. That, they just welded to. Yeah, there's, the, so it would have another bearing there and another bearing there. There's the grease fitting for it. And then they just made a real big axle coming off of that. Pretty beefy looking setup, huh? I think we need some lube. It's a little dry. Couple of noisy spots. and choke off a little too little. Yes, on. We'll make it down without bottoming out. A little rough.
<laughs> nope. Something needs a little more power. Yeah. <clears throat> Actually, I think I'm high centered. So its big issue right now is how much throttle it gets and it only gets that much and it should be able to go to that much you see off you hit the gas pedal that's how much throttle it's getting and it still has that much more and we're not bypassing the governor I don't think I think the governor is still in operation so that's another level to go but let's take this bolt right there we'll back that out so that it gets more throttle and we'll see what we get. Go big or go home, right? Let's see if that'll give us. That's how much throttle it's giving us. We still got that much more to go. What can we do? What can we do to get a little bit more out of that? Yeah, so right now we're hitting the gas pedal. Probably adjust that pedal. And yeah, we want it to go there. Could probably get some. Seems like this has a lot of slop in it. And it's got a bunch of slop in it too. We could probably help it. A little throttle adjustment, and that's what we get now. I don't call that good.
Well, I must say, that is pretty fun. <laughs> it does good, especially on the cement floors in here. It's nice and smooth, so you can whip it around. The only thing is, I need another one. <laughs> Something to race against. I'm happy with it. Uh, I want to go further along. I've already acquired some stuff for it. I'm not going to bother putting the body back on until that stuff is done. But we got to get it to go a little faster. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what that is quite yet. But you're welcome to make some guesses. It might even change the stuff that I have may not work out and may go a different direction. But that's the whole fun of building stuff, right? It'd be fun to kind of put the body on just for the aesthetics of running it around. But it's a little bit of a pain to get on just because of the way it has to fit almost straight down and, and lock in. Two people can do it, but one person forget it. A little rough to kind of screw around with. So, all right, guys, with that, I'm going to go sign off. <laughs> that was fun. I enjoyed that. And uh, I will see you soon in the next one. Till then, later. Kids. You just want food, don't you? <laughs> Brody. It's like that. You lick my fingers? <laughs> so gentle.